Even children's books are written a lot better. This book was awful in every sense. It was my time wasted sort of book. 2023 was a mixed bag of a reading year. There weren't a lot of favorites. Oh, no. More than the books that I love to read, there were a lot of mediocre books. And most of the books did not leave much of an impact. And there were some books that thoroughly disappointed me. And a few books that were just terrible that I could not even finish them. In this video, I'm going to talk about both of those books. Starting from disappointing to the worst books. Starting with the disappointing books, these books aren't exactly written poorly or they're so terrible that they should be a part of my list. However, I had high expectations from these books and they let me down. And that is why they are a part of of the most disappointing books that I read in 2023. The first one is actually the last book that I read in the month of December and this book is the uber popular YA whimsical fantasy Once Upon a Broken Heart. I read Caraval by the same author many years ago and I did not enjoy the book at all and I was hoping that maybe in that series I missed out something and since that series is complete maybe I'll find something new in this one. It has been highly praised so many people love it. It's supposed to be whimsical and dreamy with lush writing and great world building and characters you want to root for. Unfortunately, none of that came to fruition for me. I did not enjoy the world building. I did not enjoy the writing. I did not enjoy reading about these characters. There was just nothing in this book for me and it took me a long time to finish this novel and I read it only because I wanted to finish it. Honestly, and it is a really hype novel and I wanted to love it so badly unfortunately did not work for me. Another book that I was hearing a lot about perfect for the autumn season and it is Vampires of El Norte. This book was supposed to be supernatural with great romance with great bit of storytelling and everything and unfortunately it crashed for me. I listened to the audiobook and while the audiobook is narrated very well there wasn't much for me. I found the storytelling in itself slightly boring. The emphasis was too much on the romance between these two characters who were lovebirds when they were young, when they were teenagers and then they were separated because of circumstances. The guy thought that the girl was dead and so on and so forth but after a couple of years both meet again and after their meeting there is this pull and push, there are misunderstandings, they are still in love with each other and I was just waiting for something vampirish to happen because this was supposed to be Vampires of El Norte but I felt that the romance plot was too much emphasized and rest of the other things were just here. There was too much gap between what I wanted from the story and what it actually gave me. So total disappointment for me. Another disappointing read of 2023 which I was anticipating so much. I had read only great things about this particular novel. It is the uber popular Dark Academia Babel. Now okay Okay. I know, I know. How can I do that? RF Kong is such an acclaimed author and this book has been highly regarded but unfortunately it did not work for me mostly because there is a particular something that I expect from Dark Academia which I did not get from this book. Although the world building was expansive and yes I could imagine myself being in that time period and yet I felt there were a lot of things that were unnecessary especially the footnote and also the characters were rather flat and also slightly generic. The events that occurred, I could predict them and I was not very flattered with whatever happened, with whatever conspired in the entire story. Although I do think that it is an important novel, especially for privileged people who aren't very exposed to racism or who have not read or learned enough about racism, about colonization. However, since I'm from India, I have been there, I have read the history, I know so much about about it so it rather felt like spoon feeding for me. I do believe that I am not the target audience for this book. Perhaps it was written keeping a western mindset in thoughts, in writing, in the messaging. It would work well for people in the west, people who don't know much about this but for me it just fell a little flat. Nothing new for me. It is an important book and there are a lot of people who are going to enjoy it just not for me. Another really disappointing was this futuristic 
sci-fi award-winning novel called Clara and the Sun. And this book started really well. It's about an artificial friend in a time period where people can go and buy artificial friends for themselves, for their kids mostly. This book promised so much. It had so much potential with the premise and also with the questions that it raised. But then in the end, I felt that the topic was dealt in a rather superficial manner. The author could have delved deeper with the theme between artificial intelligence and how it might impact human beings, how it could have the capacity of replacing human beings or how it can replicate the feelings that human beings have. If scientists learned enough about human brains, about human emotions, then maybe AI could replace human beings. They could become as good as human beings themselves. I wanted to learn more of this theme. I wanted more exploration from this one. But at the end, it was probably a bit of a sappy sort of storytelling in the end. First half was great. Second half, not so much. And based on the hype and that it is award winning, I did not find the concept to be rather new. And I expected it to blow my mind away. I expected to learn something new, but it just fell flat for me. Another super hyped romanticy that I could not stop myself from picking because so many people were raving about it and also booktubers that I trust were raving about it. Although I know I'm not a romanticy galley, I still thought that maybe, maybe this would be different. Maybe I can finally start enjoying romance and fantasy setups. Unfortunately, it did not happen for me and this book that I had put so much expectation on. My fault. Okay. This book, The Serpent and the Wings of Night. <sighs> okay, where do I start? The book started really well. I love the character. She was very bold and she was very much bent on her goals and there wasn't much of a world building in this book. Although I do understand that it is a romanticy and the focus is more on romance and yet I would expect a little bit more of fantasy build up because after all it is still a fantasy book and in fantasy for me world building is an integral part and this book does not touch much on it maybe because the author assumed that it's already in a western setup and we are so much exposed to the western world building in fantasy setups that even if nothing is described we would still assume that the house is like that the food is like that the clothing must look this way so world building flat the romance that people were raving about i did not find much of a chemistry in there either. I don't know why they fell in love with each other, why they were attracted to each other. I really did not get it. And also the spicy scenes, it was so ludicrous. It was so funny. I don't know. I don't know. It did not work for me. It just did not. It was the part, the romance and the spicy scenes that a lot of people, a lot of booktubers were raving about. They were enthused about it. They said it was written well. It was done well. Unfortunately, it did not work for me. So I'm still not in my romanticy era. Maybe I'll do a full video about this book. Let me know if you would like me to delve deeper into The Serpent and the Wings of the Night romanticy book, why you should read it, why you should shouldn't and whom it would work for whom it wouldn't work for let me know in the comments below Another disappointing read is by one of my favorite authors. In fact, the only adult romance author that I read from, Emily Henry's Happy Place. Now, this book is part of my disappointing read. It's not the worst book that I've read in 2023. It's just that I was disappointed because when I read Emily Henry's book, there is a certain expectation that I hope to fulfill after reading this book, but it just did not deliver on my hopes or my expectation. This book revolves around two people who were engaged to each other and then they break off and then they go holidaying with their common circle of friends and they do not tell them that they are not engaged anymore because of the circumstance because they want everything to be happy to be peaceful amongst their friends and things like that this book is in my disappointing list mostly because probably I was not in the space of mind to read a book that was very dense on emotions it was not exactly a happy place for me 
me. Although it talked about friendship bonding and uh, second chance romances, still it did not pull me, it did not make me feel great about anything at all actually. Of course I read Emily Henry's books because I want to see more about human emotions and not just the romance aspect but also want to have a little bit of fun time, a little bit of light-hearted read with some sense and sensibility in it and it was not a light-hearted read. It did have great messaging every now and then. Still I did not enjoy reading about these characters. Although the friend relationship was nice to read about but it just left me wanting more. It just left me unfulfilled. But it does not mean that I'm never going to read Emily Henry's book. I'm definitely going to read more of hers. In fact I'm looking forward to her new release in 2024 but this book Happy Place was just not the happy book that I was expecting it to be. A book that I read in the first half of 2023 another book people were raving about and I think I can hear my baby crying oh no this book is supposed to be dark twisted strange little book called bunny I I don't know what this book was about. I did not understand the point of this entire book and although it was a quick read it left me wanting a lot more. This book just was not for me. You know it is one of those things. I, I can't say anything bad about the writing style. I can't say anything terrible about the characters either because this book was supposed to be about this cultish strange sort of groupism that happens in college. I can't make sense of this book still and sometimes most of the times I need my books to make some sort of sense. So yeah this is a disappointing read for me. And the last on my disappointing reads list is another uber popular young adult mystery series and it is the Inheritance Games series. Unfortunately this entire series fell flat for me mostly because I did not find anything new anything creative in the entire storyline. I have read a lot of shoujo manga and this plot line has been done hundreds and thousands of times and I felt like I've read this story so many times there was nothing new about it I did not find any of the characters endearing or enjoyable the characters were caricatures of so many other characters that we have already seen I think that this book is definitely going to appeal to its target audience perhaps it was too juvenile for me you know there are young adult novels that even adults can enjoy and appreciate and I do I still do I love so many young adult novels most of the books that I read last year were all young adult Adult, but this book was just too much juvenile for me I guess. Too similar to a lot of manga that I have read in my teen years. So that is why this book felt flat for me. Mostly I was disappointed with these books because I went reading these books with certain sort of expectations and when those expectations weren't fulfilled well that is what happens. That is why expecting things ruins your life truly. Stop expecting and your life is going to be so much more better and you are going to to enjoy reading so much more even. I'm blabbering at this point. Now let's get chatting about the worst books of 2023. Fortunately there weren't a lot many books that I ended up being a worst to reading in 2023. Just four books to talk about in my worst list. Starting off with The Lost Art of Doing Nothing. This book like the name suggests was probably nothing as in it made absolutely no point at all. Although it brought in an interesting concept of the art of doing nothing wherein the author prophesies that it is important to do nothing but why is it important to do nothing and how you can make yourself do nothing the book did not touch upon these particular issues and then I felt like what was the point of reading this book that is why it made it to my worst books list it was my time wasted sort of book the second book that made it to my worst list Poison in Paddington this was supposed to be cozy mystery very much Sherlock Holmes sort of story however it was very much below par in the sense that the characters were very poorly drawn caricatures of the original Sherlock Holmes and Watson duo there was no chemistry in between them the writing was very lackadaisical very much juvenile even children's book are written a lot better I'm sorry I'm being harsh about this but I do feel that the writing needed a lot of improvement and the characterization needed a little more build up a lot more build up actually in fact the 
character who played the female version of Sherlock Holmes was plain mean rather than being just a little bit weird or a little bit into herself being her own persona she was just awful as a character all in all I did not enjoy the story although it was built on a really great concept third book that made it to my worst list the bookshop and the barbarian this was very reminiscent of legends and latte unfortunately it did not deliver on the promise although the comparison was not made but I went reading this book because I was hoping to to get the same vibes as I got in Legends and Latte book. However, this book was awful in every sense, meaning the world building was kind of boring. The characters were boring, the story very bland. I had to push myself to get through this book and I just could not. After 65% mark, I was just so done with this entire book. So yeah, it ended up on my did not finish list. I wasted a lot of my time trying to force myself through this book there were a lot of problematic elements as well the way the gnomes were treated the way the characters were supposedly reflective of certain groups certain part of the society a no no book a book that wasn't even weird it was just plain bland and a little bit problematic book that i just could not force myself to finish the last book that i read in the last month of 2023 hoping to just up the number of books that i read yeah and i got what I deserved because this book was god awful in the sense that it had a lot of potential but it's just mm, it didn't appeal to my taste I was irritated the whole time I was reading this graphic novel called fable volume one it is basically about these characters from the fairy tales they have left their fairy tale world and come to live in human world and they are passing out as normal humans but people are getting murdered and there is mystery involved and yada yada. I really did not care for any of the characters or any of the murder mystery that was going on within the story each and every character be it Snow White or be it the Sleeping Beauty or be it the Prince Charming all of these characters really really annoyed me it was just great many characters from fairy tale taken into this fairy tale retelling sort of world and just ruined ruined everything was ruined it was just not for me maybe it would appeal to some people and yes it it was an adultish take. This graphic novel is meant for adults and there are a bit of graphic themes and adultish themes in this book as well. I hated it. Not a really great end of the year sort of reading. Waste of time. These are all the books that made it to my disappointing to worst books. What was the most disappointing or the worst book that you read in 2023? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed watching this video although I try not to be too negative about books because as an author myself I understand how difficult it is to come up with stories you put so much into writing a story and when readers don't like it it's just heartbreaking I don't think any author intends for that to happen but this is a reader's pace and I understand a boundary has to be made and I am giving this disclaimer because I feel just bad saying awful things about books that I did not enjoy of course all of these books cater to certain sort of audiences and what you like I might not like what I love you may not love this is a subjective field and none of my commentary is meant for the authors that is why I explicitly did not mention the name of authors in this particular video I had to make this video for a little bit of transparency anyways enough rambling I am sleepless I am tired I need to go rest I'm wrapping up this video and I hope to see you all in my next one thank you so much for watching take care bye bye